Welcome back. We're going to take a look today uh, quickly at doing some retrieval method methods. If you're new to spin fishing or bait casting here in Russian Fishing 4, I wanted to give you an idea. We're going to break this into two videos. One we're going to do with the hunter spoon, which will be generalizable to all spoons. Uh, although um, we'll get into the details of that, but with uh, one of the retrievals, uh, according to the spoon shape and weight and all that, it can be more or less difficult to achieve. But um, basically, this is going to be looking at the jig step, which is going to be your go-to retrieval mes method in many, many situations. Also, stop and go, as well as just a straight retrieval with speed up as a part of it. So um, we're here at Cory Lake, just out in the middle of the lake here. Um, a couple things to talk about. I'm using a, um, uh, a bait caster setup. This is a Siberia Super Duty casting rod with a black box reel. What you're using doesn't matter in the sense of you can achieve these retrieval methods. What it does matter is you may have to play with it. So if I have gold 80 spinning reel on a spinning rod and then I pull out my... Um, you know, Lacerti and a smaller rod, that the, the way that those two different setups work could vary. And there's other variables as well, like are you standing or are you sitting in a boat? Are you on the shore or out, are you out in the middle of the lake? Uh, what is the the elevation of the, the or the bottom of the of the the lake bottom or river bottom that you're casting into is there a current there's a lot of things that can impact how these retrievals work so i, I say all that to say if i tell you okay we're going to do jig step with 25 speed retrieval don't get locked into that it may be that with your setup and the current location you're at that you find that you can get jig step a little more effectively at 20 or at 30 uh, and it may be that also the bite rates of fish change based on how fast there should be a range of speeds even up to really high and really slow that you can technically can achieve a jig step for example so let's go ahead and get to it let's look at jig step here first so we're just going to cast out a little ways get about a 90 percent cast and and what you want to do with jig step is is you want to go ahead and let it rest you want to let it hit the bottom. And especially with these hunter lures, you'll actually catch fish sometimes while the <laughs> fish will see that lure falling down through the through the water and you'll catch them sometimes. So where we casted it here, it looks like we actually casted it into this spot out of the out of the hole cuz you see the line's not really moving. So typically if you're casting to a spot that's a little deep, that's where the jig step is going to be the most effective cuz the jig step the 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 thing you like about the jig step is that you're raising that lure up out of the elevation and then letting it sink back down. So if you imagine an, a space that you're reeling the lure in, you're covering several feet, both horizontal and vertical space to get yourself the most chance of catching a fish. So let's take the line out. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go, like I said, 25 is my starting point. Now it's not, I don't always do 25, but that's kind of my starting point. Now, Typically, I do one full rotation and wait about two seconds and then repeat. If you do this, you see how quick we got jig step there? If you do that, you'll know pretty quick if there are variables keeping you from getting a jig step. And you just want to jig step it all the way in. You're going to catch more fish if you can consistently jig step. Now, we're about to have some the bottom of the of the quarry lake the you know the the shape of the lake is about to come into play here we might lose the jig step when it drops off we may not what what you see more often is when you have it down in a hole and then you start coming up the shelf that's when a lot of times you'll see that jig step drop off and you can't always be consistent with it consistent with it one of my favorite places to fish here at quarry is actually just standing right over there on the key right next to the dock that finger rock and I love spin fishing from there, but it is a nightmare. And there you see jig step just went off. You see that? And we know we're about 26 meters away. And if we did this same cast over and over, we would start seeing a pattern. We'd see that the jig step falls off at about the same spot. And that's because of what you're running into on the bottom of the lake, the lake floor. Um, but it is a nightmare keeping a jig step off the key. 
using certain rigs in certain conditions with certain lures. I mean, you can certainly get to a spot. I mean, people will tell you like, oh, I can consistently get jig step off the key. And maybe they can, but with my setups, if I cast, if I don't cast in just the right spot, it will often have jig step interruptions bringing it back in. But that's okay. It's still a, it's still a good place to catch fish. And that leads us to our second type of retrieval. So there's jig step. Okay. Let's look at another type of retrieval here. And it was, uh, it was a long time that I played this game before I found out that you could do this with a hunter lure. Because this next retrieval is stop and go. And typically, you would use this um, retrieval with a wobbler. But you actually can do this with a hunter lure. So let's go retrieval speed down to 20 and try that. I'm kind of doing this on the fly. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, it's been a little while since I have... Um, uh, done these different retrieval methods. So I'm kind of doing this without having a lot of practice before getting back into here. But as soon as it hits the water, we're going to start reeling it in. Okay, do four rotations. You can do five as well, but you're not going to see it until your second rotation. That's the earliest you would possibly see it. And we didn't see it there. So let's see if we see it the next time. If not, we'll do a fifth rotation. Yeah, we're not seeing it at all. All right, let's do five rotations here. If you ever do a stop and go with a wobbler, it's very easy. There it is. And then you go to a hunter spoon and you realize you can do stop and goes with them, but your window of hitting that stop and go is so much smaller. So we're getting it on four rotations. Now the pause that you wait between starting your next set of rotations on a stop and go is longer than your jig step pause. And then once you get to within 20 meters, you're with a, with a hunter spoon, you're gonna lose stop and go. So at that point, you wanna just jig step it the rest of the way in or just do a straight retrieval. All right, let's do a stop and go again. Let's do it in this direction. Let's just see it in a different direction here. You have to be pretty precise. Now, first of all, you see as soon as it hits the water, we need to be reeling. And I'm gonna go ahead and do five good rotations twice in a row because you've gotta keep that that spoon uh, up in the water. You, uh, uh, you, you can't, it can't be down on the bottom. If you start getting touching bottom notifications, then you're not gonna get stop and go. All right, we should get it this time. Right here, I think. Nope, touching bottom. So it may be that it's too shallow in the direction we just cast. Because you have to have a long enough, like a pregnant pause there to get the stop and go to show up, but it can't let, yeah, it's sinking immediately. All right, let's try it in the deeper waters again. Where this can be really good, and, and, and I've actually had uh, some good success, is at Volkov, uh, or Volkov, according to how you pronounce that V. Um, there are some, you know, obviously some really deep places at, at, uh, at, that, at that river, and the Atlantic salmon at times seem to really like the stop and go, um, the stop and go retrieval method. So uh, it's it's a little harder if you're not casting in a deeper space, but um, at that river because it is so deep, pretty good uh, option there. And I just don't I'm not sure that everyone knows that you can do this with the hunter spoon, but if you're not catching fish off jig step, it's always worth and you're using spoons, it's always worth trying the stop and go, and there it is. In fact, you can do this with many of the different spoons. Um, sometimes you do need to speed up the retrieval. I know at uh, Wolkov, I've often done like, and see now we're getting stop and go just consistent. And you can usually catch pretty good fish doing this. Um, at Wolkov, actually, I, I, what I've liked doing is going up to maybe, um, and I think Cobra in, in, uh, in my Twitch channel might have been the one that first showed me about this, but um, we will sometimes do like up to like 30 or more retrieval speed, but then do stop and go. 
Those Atlantic salmon sometimes will go crazy for that. Okay, we're about to hit minus 20. Watch this. Stop and go will just disappear. Just gone. Just gone. So when you get to 20, and this is why for making this video, I'm using something with a line counter. Because there's some of these retrievals that I wanted you to see uh, when that was going to happen. But when that does happen, you know, just switch to a jig step. Um, I didn't mention about jig step. I showed you sort of the basic jig step. You can certainly do two rotations and then pause to get jig step. And here, let me show you that real quick. So that's stop and go. Uh, let me show you just getting jig step started with, um, with double rotations. So we'll throw it this way so that it does sink a little bit which is, uh, is just usually a, a more effective way to jig step here. All right, so we're going to keep it on 25 again for this one, just the basic speed here. And it has hit the bottom now, so or close to it. So let's go ahead and get it started here. All right, we'll see jig step here. Oh, now that's, that's not good. We do not want to fish, catch fish during this video. We are here to do jig steps and stop and goes. We are not here to catch your silly fish. Let's go ahead and get this fish in real quick. Do y'all see how fun? I, I don't know if you if it comes across in the video, but I love this rig. Now this is not the most efficient rig to to spend your money on if you're getting into bait casters. Uh, it might be worth saving up for a steelhead, but if you already have a steelhead or if you just don't want something quite that expensive or that strong, this is a good alternative. And I'll, I'll show you this rig at the end of this video. Um, so you can again, see what, see which, see what it is. All right. That's a burbot. That's awesome. That's kind of fun. Just jig step a burbot. All right. We won't cast as far this time so we can get this moving. I want to go ahead and finish this video before it gets too bloated and long. All right, so we're gonna let it drop. Just let it rest a little bit. And then we're gonna start. Let's get the jig step going. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna do double rotations and keep the jig step up. And you just want to try different things. One of the one of the pitfalls you can fall into, we can't even Anyway, one of the pitfalls you can fall into is uh you get locked into a certain certain method of of fishing, of spin fishing especially. And you never notice it. Oh, well if I'd been doing these other things then uh maybe I'd have been having a chance at different fish or, you know, bigger fish sometimes prefer different ways of retrieval, so um, okay, so one last thing before I show you the rig and we finish this this video. Um, if you are just not catching fish on the jig step or the stop and go, or if you're fishing for like a predator fish, like maybe a pike or something, it is sometimes worth considering just a straight retrieval. Um, and, and you'll be surprised. You'll catch fish this way. And so what I like, though, is doing a speed up. So about every four rotations, you can hold shift down and you see I'll get speed up down there. And then just slow back down to straight retrieval again. The reason why I do that is we're trying to get that speed up notification. See, and there's a fish. We're trying to get that speed up notification just so that we have something to increase the bite rate. Because you'll catch plenty of fish just on a straight retrieval, but you're not doing any specific type of, uh, of, of retrieval. It's hard, you know, you're not gonna, typically get any kind of indicator come up and so by doing speed up every once in a while we're hopefully triggering that the way the game is programmed we're triggering it to to see that there's um you know that there's something going on and, and because again you can if you do a bunch of straight retrieval casts you will catch some fish but a lot of times it's a pretty low bite rate i find and so I do think, like I said in the beginning, most of the time you're doing a jig step. Some, some conditions, some fish, you're going to try doing stop and go and see how that works. But uh, it's, it's good to try straight retrieval as well and, um, and then use speed up. I tell you when I do that the most is at early levels when I'm using these little spinner baits. 
Um, because you're not jig stepping these things, you know, you're just going to straight retrieval it. You might let it settle a little bit. You might stop every once in a while, but you're mostly doing straight retrieval. And so like when I'm at winding, I'll often use speed up as a way to try to entice fish with these little spinner baits. So, okay. In case any of you are interested in this rig that I'm using, let me uh, show it to you one more time. This is the ZBB60 Zyman Black Box with a line counter. Uh, it goes up to 11 kilos, although because it's a bait casting reel, it's it's stronger than what you think of with 11 kilos. And I don't I don't know how to explain it other than that. You're it's 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 not going to feel like this is only one kilo stronger than a, a you know a, a Saber 60. This actually feels like it's maybe a little stronger than a Gold 80 to me, or at least equivalent. And it's 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 a little pricey for how you know the 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 statistics on it, but you're getting the line counter and you're getting just a very high quality reel. And then this is a pretty cheap little casting rod. It just matches up perfectly. It's got 24.5 kilo um, load capacity and the max drags 11 on the on the on the Zyman. You see, I've got it uh, overloaded a little bit here, 17 on the line, but I'm using a, a, a fluorocarbon leader, 17.4 with the uh, braid, the braided line. And this setup just works really good. It's super fun. This setup is really fun at quarry. You'll be in some good fights. If you catch some big fish, normal fish, you'll reel in no problem. I don't recommend this setup at Volkov unless you know you're targeting Xander and there's very little chance you're gonna get salmon or catfish. Uh, if you're gonna catch big Atlantic salmon or big catfish, you don't really, you'd rather be using your steelhead than this rig. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or, or comments. I'm trying to show you the basics of how to do these retrieval methods with spinning, with spin fishing, but don't get locked in. Find different speeds in different places, try different retrieval methods in different conditions. The point is using variety. Don't always wait the exact amount of time between reeling in your rotations on jig step. Sometimes it's better to, there's a big window there on jig step. You can pause for one full second. You can pause for two and a half full seconds sometimes. I mean, you just kind of want to play with it and don't be, don't be exact every time. As long as you're keeping that jig step notice up, uh, you're going to, you're going to be doing good. So anyway, as always, thanks for watching.